Hi, welcome to today's lecture where we're going to cover the topic IELTS speaking in this session. So we start off by trying to understand the aims of this session. We're going to go and discuss the format and tasks at hand. We're going to further understand the strategies that could help us tackle this exam and provide examples where necessary. We'll move on to understand where students commonly face weaknesses and how to overcome these by using further help. And we'll finally end up by providing references and take on some questions. So let's start off by trying to understand the test format. So the speaking session usually lasts between 11 to 14 minutes. This is usually conducted on a one-to-one -one interview where the examination process, the conversation is recorded. So the exam has three parts where the first part consists of four to five minutes where generally the examiner asks you to introduce yourself and interviews you about uh, yourself, your personal um, ambitions, your personal qualities, and your family. Then you move on to part two where you have one or two minutes to provide a mini presentation on a topic. And then you're asked to move to part three where you have provided three to five minutes the examiner and yourself are engaged in a discussion over a topic. So let's look at section one. Section one consists of the introduction and interview where you provide a basic introduction about yourself and some familiar topics are covered. So you, first of all, you talk about your home or your hometown, or you're asked to talk about your family you could also be asked about your work life, studies, interests, or any other similar topics that relate to you personally. The second part consists of a mini presentation which can last for three to four minutes. This is where you talk about one minute on a subject that the examiner selects. So you're provided some time to prepare for this presentation where you're allowed to take down some notes and these notes generally provide as a you know function as a trigger during your presentation so that you can um, talk about cover your points across a minute generally the examiner provides no intrusion during your minute so the examiner then moves on to part three after you've provided that mini presentation on a topic. This part consists of a discussion that lasts for three to five minutes. The questions are related to topic in part two. You're engaged in a discussion. So this means that you have, you'll have to provide your opinions regarding the topic. You could also have an extensive discussions where the examiner could ask you further questions based on your response and thus you have to display an ability to express ideas and provide supporting examples to your opinions so that when you're making an argument you can properly provide evidence for why you support the case. So let's talk about the test format and the assessment criteria. So when we're trying to assess a student during the speaking exam, the first thing is, can the student effectively communicate with another individual on a one-to-one -one basis? So effective communication means that you, can, you are able to speak fluently and coherently. This would mean that you provide ideas which are related to the content, which are related to the topic. You're able to speak in a manner where there is no hesitation, there is some sort of pace and fluency in your speech, and you provide some sort of organization during your speech. So you have a flow where you cover the content on a basis um, 
there is natural progression when it comes to topics so you cover them as logically you would generally you are expected to display a range of vocabulary where you use different words during the exam and try to make sure that the words that you use are in context to the scenario your grammar is also tested so you'll have to make sure that you use different tenses different sort of grammar um, we're going to cover grammar in next in future sessions but generally in your speech you'll have to con maintain consistency when it comes to grammar especially when it comes to tenses your pronunciation needs to be understood by the examiner you'll have to make sure that um, you use at least um, as some somewhat understandable means of communicating your speech your ideas your values so try to practice pronunciations of the difficult words that you tend to use a lot and try to make sure that because different pronunciations vary the meaning of the language very much you'll have to get the pronunciation accurately let's look at the different speech functions so when you're speaking with the examiner uh, you're expected to be able to provide a different sorts of information so this could be in the form of personal information where you talk about yourself your home your family or you provide non-personal information where you talk about other issues that is uh, not personal to you such as the economy or such as opinions regarding um, uh, different broad topics like universities or what do you think about um, the advantage disadvantages of certain things so you'll have to be able to express your opinions um, you have to provide a proper explanation with examples and sometimes you'll have to provide uh, suggestions as to how to improve or suggestions as to um, different kind of solution that you could employ and often you you may have to also be able to justify your opinion so if you're picking and there might be a topic where it could be right for either way and sometimes you'll be asked to take um, a stance or an opinion regarding the topic so you think it's good or either it's good or bad um, it once you've picked a side you're you're expected to provide an argument that justifies your opinion so you you'll have to provide a constructive uh, opinion so other times you'll be asked to also speculate regarding of the future or regarding matters that you think would uh, naturally progress in a certain way so different different you have to display different sort of capacity when it comes to speech you'll have to show that you're able to communicate different sorts of information so further examples of speech functions include um, you providing a and you expressing a preference for a certain aspect or certain topic then you'll have to be able to compare things you'll have to maybe compare lifestyle culture you'll have to compare um, different views some you'll have to maybe provide summarize uh, your information so maybe it could be that your examples are very broad in nature but the exam is conducted over 15 minutes and generally each topic area lasts for around three to four minutes so summarizing would mean that you pick out the most valuable points of your argument and try to deliver them in that point of time uh, to the examiner so there could be a point where um, you'll have to provide different sort of um, views with regards to a topic you'll ex you're expected to provide some sort of flow in your conversation maybe um, the examiner provides you with a, a follow-up question and you're supposed to carry on with that it's a different kind of thing where you'll have to uh, sometimes when you're talking about the topic you're not allowed to uh, copy the words or the prompts from the topic itself you're asked to paraphrase meaning you're supposed to um, you could maybe say the same thing but use completely different words and different way you structure your sentence so let's look at the introduction and interview the introduction and interview 
is the first phase where um, the first part where the examiner will ask you to introduce um, yourself to him he will he will introduce himself also and then you'll be asked to provide information regarding your personal life where he'll ask you um, things as, that will come with uh, that will range from interests to studies to your working life so following that, you'll have an individual talk. This is where you're given a topic uh, uh, to give those the mini presentation for one to two minutes. So an example could be describe a teacher who has greatly influenced you in your education. So what you could say is you could think about where you met your teacher, what subject they taught, and what was special about them and explain why this person influenced you so much. So make sure that over the two minutes you cover each point and um, you try to emphasize on the important points. So you met in this three points where you talk about where you met them and what subject they taught. This would be basically over in the first 15 seconds. Um, you'll have to spend most of your time about what was special about them. This would mean that you'd compare them with someone else and you'd explain why they had an influence over you so much. So it could be a certain attribute like um, it could be how they were persistent with you or how they were really um, focused on to uh, getting you to improve yourself that really it, um, impacted you and uh, made her into a role model to you. So you have to think about, you have to remember that the speaking exam consists of you and your examiner. So it's a two way discussion. So uh, this would mean that, um, suppose that you are given a topic where modern society is often called materialistic. What do you think this is? So the examiner could provide you ex different examples of topics where he would ask you questions and he'd expect you to re reply to that t particular uh, question and he could follow it up with another question that would be totally uh, something that you cannot predict but you'll have to uh, but around the topic and you'll have to provide a constructive answer so th there are some other examples that you could go through of how he could ask you certain questions so when you're um, the strategies that you could uh, use to prepare yourself for the exam generally is you try to respond fully to questions that are asked by the examiner so you have to pay full attention when it comes to them asking you questions you're expected to provide answers uh, with a lot of information with a lot of details using a lot of um, different uh, types of sentence structure and you know linking words so don't try to waste time trying to talk uh, trying to write the whole talk so when you're making your notes and during the the time given to you try to make short points that will just remind you um, key ideas that prompt you during your speaking so once you look at the word it just uh, takes you like reminds you of your whole chain of thought and make sure that you have a lot of practice with a clock for judging how you're able to manage your time and not get you also need to be prepared when it comes to um, responding to a question by making sure that you paraphrase words that are taken from the question you also try to provide a clear view with regards uh, to the question you'll try to provide a good answer with a lot of examples with a lot of explanation as to why you're providing uh, such a view and try to at least come up with two sensible reasons to back up your opinions so you could come up with many but try to come up with two examples where you could uh, with each examples you broadly uh, describe and you explain them further you expect